Hey guys, this is a new video series in getting to know your way around your new Apple Mac. Apparently there is still a lot of people who are new to Macs that doesn't fully know their way around the keyboard layouts, know how to make full use of the trackpad. In this video we're going to primarily focus on the keyboard layout and following this I will do one on the trackpad. Now I've also added the regular desktop keyboard also to cover for you um, iMac or Mac Pro Mac Mini users as well. The first thing we will look at is the key placement and functions on top on the top layer and then we're going to pretty much work our way around the rest of the key functions and how to activate these. I will also be doing the same on the main desktop keyboard also covering most of the special um, keys and how we gain access to these uh, various characters and so forth. Now on all MacBooks, your power button, which is also the reset button, you will find on the top right corner. So regardless what MacBook version you have, it's exactly the same. The desktop keyboard, however, doesn't have a power button and in, it, in its place you will find instead an eject button for all your CD and disk. Now holding down the power button will either put on your MacBook Pro or switch it off completely. You could also press the power button to wake your computer up from sleep or put it back into sleep. Top keys on your left is escape and your brightness keys. It's also the same on your desktop keyboard as well. So the F1 or F2 keys will either reduce the brightness or increase the brightness. The next two keys are what you call your mission control key and the launch pad key. F3 being mission control and F4 the launch pad. On the desktop keyboard it's slightly different where the F3 is still mission control but F4 is now your dashboard key. The mission control key, the F3 key, is used to see all of the open windows on your screen at once. Um, here, for example, if I press the key, it will show me how many desktop windows I have open and what application is running of them. Think of this as an overview button that will show you everything that is running on your Mac. Like here, for example, if I press it again and I was, I've was i gone into desktop uh, free, you will see what application I have running. And what's great about this is you could pretty much organize the application the way you want and drop it to each different individual windows. Now once you're in this exposed view you could do loads of things here. If you put your mouse on the right hand corner you could open as many desktop windows as you like and grab the various application and put them in different windows. This pretty much makes your multitasking much easier than shifting from one window to another desktop window which can take some time. So you know gain quick access to that general overview makes it a lot easier for you to pretty much organize your applications and your different particular windows that you have open. Here's another example where I'm in um, the exposed view and I could open as many windows as I like with different various uh, applications running in them, wallpapers, you name it. And you could really much organize them, put it how you want, move it how you in in order of what you want to see first. Also, if you don't like um, all of these windows open, you could gain easy access by just putting your mouse over that window and simply just close them by pressing the X button. You don't have to press the key or use your trackpad. You also got an icon on your dock that is highlighted as the machine control. And by just pressing it, it will do exactly the same thing. Thing as pressing that F3 button. The F4 key, our mission control key, this is the key that will give you access to all of your install application that you will find on your Mac. Your desktop keyboard, the F4 instead is a dashboard button, giving you quick access to your widgets with information about the weather and more. Again, there is an icon you can click to gain the same functionality on your desktop. Button F5 and F6 has no function on the wireless keyboard unless you assign a function towards them. However, on the MacBooks, they're just the backlight of your keyboard by increasing um, the light um, to on and decreasing to turn it off. Now our final keys from F7 going up to all the way to F12 are your media keys. Um, both keyboards um, on the desktop and on your Macs 
uh, MacBooks has exactly the same function, uh, previous track, play, pause, and then overall your volume adjustments. The remaining functions and characters on your keyboard is made out of uh, various different numeric characters, numbers one going upwards, secondary control, and other related functions. Uh, to each particular button. We've got a tab button right there and then following that you've got all your various different letter characters. Um, you've got your uh, backspace button just there on top where the on and off button is, your return enter button, you've got your right shift button and then across that you'll find your caps button that's highlighted with the button coming on and off. Below that you've got your shift to the left, underneath that you've got a function key, your control button, alt button, command button, space bar, the opposite on the right hand side and then you've got your directional keys as well. The main problem that everyone has coming from Windows is the layout of the keyboard on the Macs where it's uh, not easy to gain access to those secondary functions, controls, or alternative um, keys and characters. Um, so I'm going to give you a demo as to how you would gain access to each particular characters on your keyboard. Now the shift key to your left or right is the main one that will gain you access to those different characters that you see highlighted on your keyboard. So just holding this down and pressing it, pressing that particular key that or character that you require um, on your keyboard, you will gain access to the uh, secondary controls of that key. Now to gain access to the third characters, um, of each of these keys, for example, you've got the euro symbol and then you've got the um, number symbol. What you will do, what you will need to do, is just hold down the Alt button, uh, whether it's right or left, and then hold the corresponding keys, and that will pretty much activate those third characters that um, that you're trying to gain access to. So you've got the Shift button to give you gain you access to the secondary characters. And then you have the alt key to gain your access to menus, hotkeys and the various accents and symbols. Next we have the command key. The command key's purpose is to allow you to enter various different keyboard shortcuts that you will find on your keyboard. So holding down the command key and the Q button for example will quit the various different applications that I currently have active. So I'm, what I'm going to do is show you an example here where I'm going to open the calendar and if I wanted to quit for example by using my keyboard, command and Q button will just quit the application. Now this even works when you're on full screen as well, so if you're stuck uh, in an application you want to quit, just press that command and the Q button, it will quit out of that application. Next up we have the function key. Now the function key, like the other buttons, uh, pretty much gain, ga gains you access to various different shortcuts or acts as different functionality. For example, what, the way I have it set on my one is, if I double tap the function key, I will activate um, the voice command or the dictation on the computer that is available. What time is it? Full stop. Space. Delete. Delete that. Delete that. Now in order to gain the different functionality of your keyboard or what the keys does, best to go into system preferences, click on the keyboard once it opens, and then you'll come to this keyboard uh, general overview of various different functions that you could adjust, amend, or look into. So you've got various different delays. Say for example you're Windows user, you're used to F1, F2, etc. You could put these keys back to a standard functionality, but by in mind that will switch off all the other functions typically that you have on the Mac. If, say, for example, you're from a different country and you just don't want to use the English uh, layout or uh, um, a text format, then you could change it to the particular language that suits you. Or have two form of keyboard of, uh, or, or different text uh, format of the various different languages that you would like. Now if you also want to know the various different shortcuts that's available with whatever keys it is you can press to gain access to these shortcuts, it's all accessible for you, it's all categorized for you to customize, put on or off. So if you wanted to really make full use of your keyboard, I would highly recommend you go into this particular option. 
here is an example of me making use out of these available options where I've decided to put the F1 keys to your standard keys. So that means when I'm pressing these F1 function buttons, nothing is pretty much going to happen. They're not going to activate as your standard um, options or functions. And if I wanted to write various different shortcuts, uh, quotes, I can do so uh, by typing it in, giving it a meaning, whatever key it is that I'm going to press on the keyboard or whatever I'm going to type. You could really go ahead and customize the keyboard in various different ways to suit your own needs, make things quicker for you, a lot simpler for you. Uh, here's an example where um, I'm going to put some quick text um, to make my, you know, typing a lot easy. Uh, OMW on my way or oh, I've just done manually there CUB will call you back so you know use these functions get to know them it will make your life a lot easier to use your Mac if you want to learn every single shortcuts on your keyboard um, you know the option is there go into shortcuts click whether it's a keyboard or a particular function you're after for example a lot of people wants to know how do you print screen or how do you take uh, a picture of your current desktop it's all accessible right there in that option if you go into the shortcuts you select the sh screenshot option it will be highlighted there for you save picture of screen as a file and it's indicating the command there it just shows you press the shift button command button and the number three button and then even if you put your mouse right underneath where the command is it highlights it for you shift command Command and the letter three will take a screenshot or or do a sprint uh, a print screen of your desktop. So testing it out, command button shift and the number three, and then if you could see right there on the right side, it's taking a screen print of my desktop. And if I just highlight that and sp and press the space bar, uh, you could see that uh, clearly illustrated that it I've just taken a a screen print. Now one thing to note, spacebar. Spacebar has its own functionality on the Mac. If you highlight a folder, a picture, whatever it is, and you press the spacebar, it will give you a quick view. So quick view is what the spacebar does. So for example, let me just find a document and I'm just going to press the spacebar. That will pretty much give me a quick view of that file. It, it works with everything to be quite fairly honest. So for example, I've downloaded the music, just press the space bar, it will play that music for you. Press it again, it will stop playing. So it's a quick view, quick function to, uh, you know, to whatever file you're not particularly sure about. You just want to have a quick snap, snip of uh, whatever media file, movie, you want to quickly see uh, what movie is this. So, you know, just highlight it, press the space bar and the space bar will give you a quick look at whatever folder it is that you've highlighted. Okay, so we, I'm just going to play around and give you a very different example of the command key. Uh, command and letter D will duplicate whatever you've selected. The command and F key, that will bring up your finder, so that way you could search whatever file it is that you need to search in your finder. If I wanted to copy and paste, command C to copy and command V to paste, and that will paste whatever it is that I've copied to paste. Say, say for example, I wanted to delete what I've highlighted, come on backspace, and that will delete the selected files. So you could see the command key itself has a vast amount of functionality to it, and it can activate so much on your keyboard. Whatever I showed you on the MacBook, it applies exactly the same to your desktop wireless keyboard. Same functions, exactly the same. Here for example on the MacBook Air, I'm using the mouse to gain access to the spotlight to search for various different things. Quick access, holding the command button down and the space bar, there's the spotlight and I could type and quickly get into it. Now most of the things I've shown you guys on the keyboard has icons as well on your dock or in your applications where you could use the launch pad uh, to view them and see. I mean here for example, you got the icon there giving you an overview of all of your window with mission control. The launch pad could give you quick access to all of your applications installed. You've got an app uh, for that um, and then next to that you have your dashboard. Your dashboard to give you quick access to all your widgets, uh, all the information on the weather, the stock or whatever uh, widgets that you have available installed. Now say for example you can't find these icons and they're deleted uh, or you know you you've uh, by mistakenly uh, taken it off on your dashboard and normally that's done by just uh, holding it down with your mouse 
taken off the dock and it will just buff away but but that doesn't mean it's uh it, it's been deleted it will always be under your launch pad where all your application is you just need to grab it bring it back down hold it down for a few seconds on your dock and that will bring that app um, back on there so that way you could gain quick access to it or you could right click on the app itself and then that will give you various different access and options now to finish this video off I'm just going to show you guys how to connect your wireless keyboard to your Mac um, that will even anything that's Bluetooth including the uh, magic mouse as well if you don't want to use the trackpad so you know I know a lot of you are going to ask me so I'm just going to show you uh, make sure the keyboard wireless keyboard is on what you want to do is go on to your Mac to the right hand side and you see the Bluetooth sign and you want to go down to open Bluetooth preferences that will bring up this uh, screen right there you it will show you the available Bluetooth devices once you find your keyboard pre highlight it press the pay button you'll get this activation code to type onto the wireless desktop keyboard so just type it in press enter and it will pair itself together with your MacBook and from there you're pretty much pretty good to go so you've got your wireless keyboard connected I mean with the mouse it's a lot easier with the wireless mouse it will just pair itself with Bluetooth but hopefully this video has been quite fairly um, helpful um, at least it will help you on finding your way around the Mac check out for the next series on the trackpad hope you enjoy hit the like button helps a lot cheers